Hey everybody, welcome back to Kelly's Creations. I'm so glad you're here. We are going to be doing another miniature today. And this is the perfect miniature if you're just starting out, you're a beginner like I am. I've done a few, but I'm still learning every step of the way. So this is a perfect one to do. So visit your local thrift shop. Find a great uh, base or great little container like this is. This was a recipe holder. It had great bones, a great foundation so that you don't have to build it yourself. That is the probably easiest way. If you can find a great base to work with and a lot of different ones as this I got lucky so lucky with this one because this recipe holder is a shape of a house right here I'm kind of fooling around whether I could use those shelves but they're just too big so I'm going to set them aside for another project but bird cages lanterns um, anything that has like a box shape or a nice shape that you can build your miniature setting inside. So with this one, since it's the shape of a house, I thought it would make the perfect little craft room she shed. So I started with pool and in Waverly paint and I gave this whole house three coats. Then I came in with my stamps that I got off of Amazon. And first I painted them white. It's Cashew by Waverly. I painted the stamp white because I wanted the bricks to have a white background. And I'm just taking the stamp and setting it down and pushing with my fingers to transfer that paint onto my house. I'm going to do this all around the whole house. I recently put on my community tab whether you guys like the two-part series that I do or if you would like one longer video and I had a few responses saying they would like just one video so here you go. <laughs> I've always cut these videos into two because there's so much that they were going to be hour long videos and I thought two half hour videos were better. So this is my first shot. Let's see how this goes. This is a longer video. This will be an hour. So let's see if everybody likes this better. If you want me to go back to doing these in two steps or two videos. So like I said, I'm taking that brick stamp and I'm painting it white. I went all around. Then I wash my stamp off. I'm going to come back in with ink black. So I'm just pushing the ink on my stamp and I am going to go over everything I just did in white. And some of the black comes off, some doesn't. That's exactly the look I was going for. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. You can see the black, you can see the white, and it lines up perfectly. If you have a little bit of bleeding with your black, all you have to do is come in either with white or with the pool color, the original color, and kind of just dab in between. This doesn't have to be perfect, it's a shed. <laughs> So I'm going to keep stamping over everything. I do, as you can see, stamp over where the roof edges are, but I just come back in and go back over that with blue so that there's a nice crisp line. I figure it would be easier to touch up the black and white than to try to fit it in <laughs> that triangle shape. Now, this was my mistake. You saw me glue the chimney on because that piece was coming off. I should have left it off, painted it, so that I would have been able to stamp. I couldn't get my stamp in this little area, and I wanted the bottom part of that chimney to be brick. So I looked at my stash, and Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree, since they're smaller, was a perfect shape for a brick. So I improvised and I dipped the Jenga block in white paint and I kind of used the Jenga block as a stamp and I stamped the chimney. Um, and it actually worked. It worked perfectly. Um, if I didn't tell you I did it, you probably wouldn't know. 
<laughs> and then the same thing. Once that white dried, I came in, I stamped the black on my Django block, and I went over the white so that it would look just like the rest of the shed. And this is what it looks like, all stenciled, and the chimney with the Django blocks, it looks amazing. I love the way the brick looks against the blue. It's just a really pretty color. So using that pool, again, Waverly Blue, and mixing some baking soda in to give it texture, I'm going to stipple it onto the roof. I do two coats because I want the roof to be textured and not just a smooth. I think it really brings it out, really makes it stand out more doing this. And I don't show on camera, but I do the top roof of the chimney as well. So after two coats, it really starts getting that textured look, but not too much, just enough to make it stand out from the brick. And that's after it is dried. See, the texture is just so stinking cute. So I went into my favorite scrapbooking book and picked out some country patterns for the she shed. And I love this, <laughs> like wooden blue toned with the roses. I think that is so pretty. So I'm gonna use this one for the back wall of the shed. And I just used my trimmer to really make sure I had straight cuts and sometimes when I cut with scissors, it gets a little wonky. <laughs> I wanted this just to be nice, clean, straight cuts and hopefully perfectly sized where it fits against that back wall. So for the side walls, I wanted a little different and I used a more uh, white toned paper. The back wall is going to have a lot going on. So I wanted the side walls to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So I chose a lighter white wood with flowers as well to match the back wall. And I am just going to use Mod Podge and I am going to put the back wall wallpaper on and both side walls on. So we're going to add a lighting element to this and it's a little outside the box but i was inspired by this light i seen at a hotel we stayed at and it was a silver ball with just lights wrapped around it so i thought i could recreate that using just a ball of tin foil that would be the silver aspect and then taking fairy lights i wrapped the fairy lights going all the the way around the tin foil ball until I got to the end of the fairy lights then I just added just a little bit of hot glue to keep those fairy lights on that ball and the reflection off of that tin foil oh my gosh it's so amazing when it's hanging in the shed and this was just a really easy way and to make a light for the shed. I have not put lighting in my other mini. So for this one, I really wanted to try adding a lighting element to it. So like I said, I wrapped it around that tinfoil ball. I just added just a little bit of hot glue to keep the end of it in place. And then I'm going to use that Velcro that I showed you. And I'm going to put a piece of Velcro on the battery box. And I'm going to Velcro it to the top inside roof. It stays hidden and you can still access the on and off button easily. 
and when you want to replace the batteries since it's velcro you can just put pull the box down and change the batteries and put it right back into place so um, this worked out really well once i got it hung in the shed um i used painter's tape just to tape the rest of the excess wire where i wanted it to hang and again easy peasy when you want to change those batteries out it you might be able to still use the painter's tape depending on how sticky it is but you can always just add more painter's tape to put the light in place so right now you just see me taking the strips off of the velcro and now i'm gonna velcro that box right to the inside of that roof it's going to be hidden you're not going to see the box all you're going to see is the string hanging down with that unique lighting fixture and again using painter's tape i just put painter's tape where i want the string to be attached to that box and the length i want it hanging down so it's just a little bit of painter's tape on top of the battery box so that it will hang in the center and down far enough exactly where i want it so there's that light on and it adding light to these little minis just takes it up a notch it really does bring out not just being able to see it a lot better but it just gives it that homey feeling it really makes the piece stand out and then you can really see all the little details that you add to your piece as well so for the base of my house or shed what i'm going to do is take these rubber uh, feet off of this and sand down a cutting board from dollar tree i gave it a quick sand and then i'm using this folk art blue tint for wood and i'm just going to keep going over this until i have the wood showing with a hint of that blue and it matches the shed perfectly i'm going to use some super glue to attach this to the wood and i'm probably going to come back in and maybe put a couple screws through the bottom as well to really make sure the house does not fall off of the base but for right now i'm using super glue okay so let's start making some items for our she shed these are the little rubber inserts that you put in between your toes when you paint your nails <laughs> um i was looking for something in my nail stash and i came across these and i'm like you know what i don't paint my own nails anymore so these to me screamed one of those little carts and <laughs> I took four different colors and I hot glued them together. Then using these decorative, like they're called bamboo skewer, skewers, but they're decorative toothpicks and two of these tags. I'm going to make one of those little, kind of looks like one of those rolling carts, but mine is going to be like a table storage unit um so i kind of just used the i don't know what those are called that you put in between your toes but i used those to kind of figure out how long i needed my tags and then i just drew a line and i cut the tag down to size this is going to be the top of the cabinet and the bottom of the cabinet and those tags are super easy to cut. I just used my little miter tool to cut where I needed to cut. Once I had them cut down, I used a Sharpie and I just went around the edges of those tags with a black Sharpie. Then I came in with metallic paint and I painted the top of them. I took the bamboo skewer toothpicks <laughs> and measured, put my top and bottom on and kind of eyeball measured how long I wanted the toothpick, drew a line and I cut four of those as well. Those will also be painted in the metallic. Um, I'm mimicking the 
metal that would be on the top of this cabinet and the metal sides. That's why I went with metallic paint. I have one of these carts that is the clear drawers and on my cart there's um, indents on the top of this cabinet. So just to make it a little bit more realistic, I took a Sharpie and I drew dots going in a square on for the top piece of this little cabinet. Now all that's left to do is glue all the pieces together. So I started with the bottom and I glued the bottom piece on. Then I came in with those toothpicks and I super glued them to each corner. And then I glued my top piece on. Once everything was glued together, we needed to make some handles. So I took those toothpicks. They have like a decorative top that's kind of round, rounded top. And I just cut the tops off of those toothpicks. I put them on some tape so that it would be easy to paint. And I painted the tops of the toothpicks in the metallic as well. Now taking the bottom of the toothpick, I used that to poke four holes into the um, foam and inserted those little tops into the holes. Now, sometimes I had to take the toothpick and make the hole just a little bigger. Um, and then I just took some tweezers and I inserted the tops into those holes so that the cabinet would have these little handles. And there's my little cabinet. Oh my gosh, that little pop-up in the corner was <laughs> my inspiration for this. And I think this turned out so cute. Oh my goodness. And it's made with foam that you put in between your toes. How cute is that? <laughs> so for my shelves, I had colored popsicle craft sticks and I am going to use one of every color and I am going to just super glue those to the back wall and I thought using colored craft sticks was just fun. I imagine a she shed slash craft room being fun and colorful so I thought these would make great shelves for my she shed. Once I had my shelves in place, it was time to start working on some more decorations for this. And I had purchased this little sewing travel kit and it had so many little cute little items that I could use for this craft room. So we started with a dollhouse table um, from Dollar Tree and a furniture touch-up marker because you guys know I love these. I went over the table and then I kind of just went over certain areas to make it look like wood grain. I did around the edges of the tabletop as well. Then I came in with some white chalk paint and I painted the whole bottom of it white. The measuring tape that came in that sewing kit I thought would be so cute to glue down to the top of the table on the edge and that would be great to have in a craft room and I thought it was super cute just to let the corners hang over and not trim it totally rounded like the table. I just thought it kind of almost looked like a decorative, uh, I went blank, uh, runner I guess for the table so I have these colorful beads I found at a Goodwill and of course you know I got to use some uh, shells from the shooting range because <laughs> those have come in so handy for my minis so right now I'm just kind of grabbing what I'm going to be needing next now those decorative 
bought beads. I got a whole bag at Goodwill. I scored big time. And they're different colors. So I thought that would be a good thing to glue down to the table. And inside I'm going to put toothpicks to mimic maybe paint brushes or dowels. Just whatever I would have on my table um, in my own craft room. And I start by gluing down the beads and then I'm going to fill them. I loved the colorful beads because my shelves are colorful and I really wanted to add some colorful aspects to this. And toothpicks are great to mimic this. They're also great to make a pencil. So I cut the toothpick down. I used a brown marker to paint the tip of the pencil. I used a yellow marker, of course, to paint the center of the pencil. And I used a red marker to paint the tip of this toothpick to make it look like an eraser. And it made the cutest little pencil, oh my gosh. I also took some paint brushes that I won't be using anymore. And I cut the tips off of those paint brushes. And I'm gonna use that to put in one of the um, little bins here for paint brushes. I am making some more pencils to put in the red little bin. And then in the beige bin is gonna be just toothpicks to mimic, like I said, more maybe pencils or dowels or paint brushes. Um, I just wanted to be able to fill up these little things with craft items. So now it's time to have some fun making little miniature paints and Mod Podge. So I took those bullet shells and I painted the tops white. This is going to be the lid of the paint. I had three uh, little miniature pictures that I printed out just by finding a picture under Google Images and resizing it down smaller. So I cut each of those little paints out <laughs> I went blank <laughs> and I had the full-size version of each paint so I took each paint color corresponding to the label and I painted the rest of the shell in that paint color and then I'm just gonna Mod Podge those labels onto the corresponding paint color and you have the cutest little Waverly paints ever oh my gosh i'll show you in a minute what they look like next to the bigger version now i know everybody doesn't have little bullet shells so you can also use a glue stick for this and do the same thing that i did with the shell you can also use the wooden part of one of the sponge brushes um, and cut that down as well and make little miniature paints out of that so I'm just using a glue stick. I'm gonna put glue on each label. I said I Mod Podge them, I didn't. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> that would be messy. So I used a glue stick and I put each label on each paint. These are so adorable. Look at <laughs> the little minis next to the full size. Oh my goodness. So since I used those little shells, I had to put a bottom on it. And I just put some hot glue in them and put push pins in the bottom. That way I would have something to glue them down to the shed. This worked perfectly. It's just a little hot. Gotta let it cool down. So we're going to make some more paint. And these are those miniature bottles with the cork tops from Dollar Tree. And I am just going to fill them with a little bit of acrylic paint in all different colors. I put a little bit of paint. I put the cork back on and I give it just a good shake. And most of the paint will cover all of the bottle. 
if you have a little bit that isn't covered you can kind of twist it around until the paint goes around the whole inside of the bottle um, i just use these little acrylic paints to do that because the little paints made it easy to squeeze into the bottles so that worked out perfect i put the corks back on and set them aside the paint will, I mean, there is a little bit of paint in the glass bottle, so it will kind of settle, but that just makes it look like it's been used. Look how cute these are. And that is the before picture, and now I'm going to put some labels on them. I printed out and resized so that it would be tiny, just a bunch of random labels. Um, you get the gist of the label. You can't really read the text on the label, which was fine. Because once it's in the She Shed craft room, you're not going to really be able to read it anyway. I just wanted the look of having a label on the paints. So here is all of the paints with the little mini labels on them. So cute. I showed this in a previous video where I got these wacky packages from Big Lots. And <laughs> they're so stinking cute. They um, look like the normal packaging but they have silly uh different labels on them so i thought that they were the perfect size to make packages so i took some brown crafters tape and i just wrapped it like a present so once i had both of them wrapped i had printed out and resized a miniature label and a miniature label from amazon prime because I don't know about you guys, but my craft room always has a package usually in it because I was buying something off of Amazon. <laughs> so I just thought that would be a cute little touch. I used school glue to put the label on the package and wrapped both packages. I even used some brown tape I had to really make it look realistic. Wrapped them like presents, used school glue to attach the label. And then I actually had some packing tape and I put a piece of clear packing tape on top of the label to make it look even more authentic. Once you put that clear packing tape on there, oh my gosh, it looks like a little miniature package was just delivered to your miniature craft room. So cute. It's all these little touches that really make such a big impact when you're doing these miniatures. How stinking cute are those packages? I just absolutely love them. And they look so cute on the table. <laughs> so now we're going back to that sewing kit that I had showed you at the beginning. And all I'm doing is using my miter cutter and I am cutting down the center of each spool of thread. Then I'm using school glue to keep all those little wiggly threads that are sticking out in place. So I cut all of these in half, I come in with school glue and clean them up a little bit by gluing down the little pieces that are straggling. I'm using another Dollar Tree glass uh, bottle with the silver lid, but I'm not using the bottle part, I'm just using the lid. And I had gotten this hemp string from Goodwill and I thought that would make the cutest little basket. So I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue going around the bottom of the lip and going almost to the bottom. I like the decorative part of the bottom of this lid, which would actually be the top of the lid, but there's ridges. So I thought leaving the ridges would be super cute. I used blue and I used brown of that hemp string. Then I come in with some truffle and I'm just gonna paint the bottom where the ridges are. And I'm gonna paint the lip of these to really make this look like a basket. These are gonna be little baskets that hold yarn. And oh, I'm so in love with these little baskets. So what I did was I grabbed a handle to one of the sponge brushes and I wrapped some yarn. You want to use skinny yarn. So if you have yarn from the Dollar Tree, that works perfect. You don't want your yarn to be too fat because it loses the effect. 
So the Dollar Tree yarn works perfect, or if you got some thin yarn, that works perfect too. So I wrapped it around, I pulled it off, and then I tied it in the center to make it look like a miniature little yarn roll. And then all I'm gonna do is add some hot glue to the inside of that cap, and I'm gonna glue these three pieces of yarn down into the basket, kind of moving them around and placing them where I want them um, so that you can see the full effect of it. I'm gonna be doing this to both baskets. One basket just has yellow yarn in it, and the other basket has white and red um and green i think yarn in it that way you have like two different styles of the baskets now i had these tim holt i bought like a tim holtz bundle which i'll show you and it had a bunch of little miniature labels in them that were the perfect size to add to the front of the basket i hot glued a little label down and i just wrote yarn on it oh my gosh so stinking cute i bought the tim holtz package from amazon but you can get it of course at hobby lobby and that's the little yarn baskets oh my goodness <laughs> miniatures are so much fun to make and most of the time you can make them with items you already have in your stock so there's the little yarn baskets now we need to make fabric bundles. So I took some fabric that I purchased from Dollar Tree and I cut a square of it. Then I cut that square into strips. So we're just gonna make miniature yarn bundles, or not yarn bundles, um, fabric bundles. Kind of like the little miniature ones you can get at Walmart where they sell like the odd pieces in a bundle. So I folded it in half and then I kept folding it long ways so first you fold it in half and then just fold it long ways i used glue to attach both ends and then i cut off any excess and that makes a little perfect square where one side is cut but the other side you can see it rolled just like you would see in the store for each of these i made three bundles and i glued three bundles together so each bundle has three in it then i just took some string and i wrapped it around it and tied it and added a label now on these labels i didn't write anything um you can if you want that's a personal you know preference of course you could write squiggly lines to mimic that it has writing on it or you can even print off a label and resize it down to the miniature Here's a closer look at those little bundles of fabric. So cute. Oh my goodness, they're gonna look so cute in the craft room. For my rug, I had this beautiful pink floral and all I did was cut a square. I like the fringe at the bottom, easy peasy. Now I did cut off, um, or I did resize a calendar that was real colorful. So I wanted a calendar hanging on the wall in the craft room. So all I did was cut out a piece of that calendar and I took one of those wooden tags and a yellow marker and I painted the wooden tag in the yellow to match the color of the calendar. And then I just used school glue to attach the calendar to the wooden tag. Once I had the calendar attached to it, I went around the edges of the paper with that marker to kind of blend it in and make it look like it's one cohesive piece. Right now, it to me, it looked too much like a paper glued to <laughs> the board. Once you kind of go around the edges with that marker, it really blends it in and it makes it look like it was one cohesive piece. Like I said before, I'm repeating myself, <laughs> but really cute. That's gonna go on the wall of the craft room. 
Just to add another little touch, I circled one of the dates on the calendar just because I thought that would be cute to have a date circled. So now I am going to take that book. These are one of the prepackaged books I bought off of Amazon. And I am going to add just a different um, label to the top of it. I had this little kind of newspaper print out and I thought that would be super cute to attach to the book and make it look like it's a crafter's book instead of just your normal standard book. So once I was finished with my book, I'm going to show you that Tim Holtz collection. It's so cute. It comes with so many different labels and different little items you can use for minis. I had resized some tacky glue and I am going to just attach the tacky glue to one of those shells. Um, now I don't need to paint the shell or anything because the top of the shell works perfectly with the label of the tacky glue. So I used a glue stick to glue that on and then I'm going to grab the print that I resized of the Mod Podges. There was a bunch of different Mod Podge bottles and I just cut them down. I left them all in a row because I'm going to cut this in half and I am going to glue this down to a glue stick, one of the miniature glue sticks. And I that way no matter what your viewpoint of, of of the Mod Podge, you see a Mod Podge bottle. So I thought that would be neat just to wrap around the glue stick. And even though it's like three different bottles, it's okay. You still get the hint, it's Mod Podge. <laughs> All you have to do is glue it down and then trim it. And it makes the cutest little Mod Podge bottle. So I do this with the both of them. And I have two Mod Podge bottles now to go with the glue bottle as well. Here's a close-up look at them. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. And there's a close-up of the glue. So now I want to make a little pegboard for my craft room. And I am just using this that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, it's not felt. I'm not really sure what it's called to tell you the truth. I'm sure you guys know it comes in the package. I grabbed the white one and I'm using a toothpick and I'm poking holes into this. It's foam board. Ugh, why do I keep going blank guys? <laughs> so it's like the pieces of little foam board that you can get from Dollar Tree with different colors. So I'm taking my toothpick and I am just making row, rows of holes into the little foam board and it makes the cutest little pegboard. Oh my goodness. Now using jewelry wire, I am going to cut small little pieces and I'm just going to make three hooks in the pegboard. And I had ordered small little scissors and they didn't come in time for the video. What I had planned on was to put a couple little hooks in the pegboard and then hang those little tiny scissors from them. So I, you could put hooks across the whole pegboard. You could even add shelves to your pegboard. You can do whatever you want with this. This is just a suggestion. I didn't want, you're not gonna fully see this on the wall. You're gonna get the hint that there's a pegboard on the wall. So I just didn't think I needed to go that far in depth with it. I thought adding three hooks to it. And then I'm also gonna add a few stickers on it, kind of like they were um, put on with a magnet, like I'm going to use them for later. I also had these little bitty blocks that have letters on them. So I did hot glue three of those blocks in the corner, and it spells DIY, just for a little added touch to the pegboard. These are like the jewels that you can decorate your nails with. And I thought those would make perfect little magnets. So I just glued a couple random little tags onto the pegboard. And then I'm going to use a silver jewel 
and glue that down to mimic that magnet that would be holding that paper to the board. And then I will come in and I'll show you how I glued down the three little blocks that spell DIY. I did not film me putting it all together because I figured this video was a little long as it is, but I'm going to give you so many close-ups of how this turned out. So I took all of the items that you saw me make and I added them to the craft room. I also took a sheet of that wallpaper and I wrote she shed on it to make a little sign for the outside of the craft room. So here it is, guys. I put a chair in there. I put my little packages on the chair. And the book is on the table along with the container that I made. I added some floral in the corners, some floral on the floor. And then I filled the shelves with all the miniature craft supplies that I showed in this video. I put the calendar on the wall and I also added a clock above the calendar there's the light there's the pegboard um, all the little spools are on the shelf along with the little paints and i just think this came together so stinking cute <laughs> i am in love with this little she shed craft room i hope this brought inspiration to you to go to the thrift store find an item that you can turn into a craft room, a library, um, you can even do a glam room. There's so many different little miniature scenes you can do by finding items at the thrift store. Let me know down below if you're liking the miniatures. Do you want me to keep going? Because I love making miniatures. Um, or do you want to see some different crafts again? It's all up to you guys. I will do whatever you want to see. I hope you guys are having a blessed and wonderful week. I love y'all so much. Don't forget to like, comment, share. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, now's the time to do it. I hope you all have a blessed and wonderful week and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye y'all.